It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Titans and the Seahawks. And it's coming up next. We are in the Pacific Northwest as we get set for football at Lumen Field here in the Soto District of Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Gardner alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Now come the Titans for their first possession, led by Ryan Tannehill in his 10th NFL season and third with Tennessee. And the former Miami Dolphin had a career renaissance in 2019 with Tennessee and carried it over into 2020. A career-high 32 touchdowns, just seven interceptions, and those were the fewest he'd thrown in a full season. And speaking of full seasons, he played all 16 games for the first time since 2015. He's got to be excited about 2021. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. And not the start he was hoping for there as he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. And that's it. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play car, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. And he'll get only a couple after the 22. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Oh, the return is Reed. They'll call that punt at 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. 
And for the first time, we get a look at the veteran Russell Wilson as he gets set to lead yet again the Seattle Seahawks offense. Gave the commencement address at the University of Wisconsin a couple of years ago. One of the most popular players ever to pull on the uniform there. The beginning of his career, he was a so-called game manager. Take care of the football and rely on the defense. Now, in this stage of his career, the offense runs through him, and it runs very well. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. They go back to Carson here on second. And yeah, not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. Now it's Wilson. Pressure comes and Wilson's going to go down. That's sacked by the DN to Nico Autry. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. Back deep, Chester Rogers. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And it'll be Titan football. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Tannehill on first down. He's got his tight end, Anthony Furkser. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. Four yards the pickup, first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Derrick Henry. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Tannehill. Gets this to Ferkser, the tight end. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And remember, the Titans lost John U. Smith, their number one tight end the last few years, when he signed with New England in free agency. So that might open up a few more looks for Ferkser. And he makes a smooth catch there. 
Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to A.J. Brown that time. And it's second down. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes. But the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Tannehill. That's taken in, complete to Reynolds. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their round running safety. Tannehill now to throw. He wants Reynolds way downfield. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Well, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. And a fake here. Direct snap to the up man. And he will not make it. They stop him short of the first down. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool him. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now. First and 10 at their own 44. Now Wilson. Left side complete to lock it. A gain of six there on first. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. On second down now, it's Carson, and he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Now Wilson on first down. That's complete to DK Metcalf. Seven yards to pick up there. So for this defense, a tall order ahead trying to defend against Russell Wilson. Charles, your keys for how they might go about keeping him in check? Well, before we even get to the keys, let's start with the problems he presents because he feels pressure so well. He's got a great sixth sense, maybe even a seventh and eighth. He knows where the pressure's coming from. He knows how to slide away from it, sometimes run away from it, and then he finds good throwing lanes to deliver downfield. So to me... Is that pressure inside, big, tall guys to make him try and throw over them and make his height work against him. On third down, Carson. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. We're scoreless after one.
second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here as they've got it with a first and ten. They'll try the left side. It's Carson, about three yards there to the 27. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And this will go to Carson out wide. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the right. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This would be a critical call. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. They run for it with Carson. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. They only needed about four or five inches there, relied on the big guys up front and got it done. Yeah, this is the time to just go ahead and hit it straight ahead. No juking, right? No movement in the backfield. Take the ball and go. As I heard a coach tell a player a long time ago, save your dancing for the club, son. Just get up into that line of scrimmage. From the 10, first and goal. Wilson will hand to Carson on the option. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second and goal from inside the five. Carson. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Chris Carson oh, yeah, taking it in from four yards out as his guys are first onto the scoreboard here this afternoon. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was all capped off by the Chris Carson touchdown run. the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. 
Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. play fake and it's Tannehill open his swing the tight end and he's tackled a yard short of the marker good gain of nine on first down so much goes into a successful play doesn't it how about that play action there freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion now we've got movement up front I think this is going to be on the Titans maybe anticipating a blitz and they jumped yeah and if we saw it you know that they saw it the bad guys might have been coming on that play had to pick them up and they jumped a bad full start penalty there now second and six Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he's got some space here. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. And we were down on the field watching Henry warm up before the game. He's a big man. No wonder he breaks those tackles. And you remember what I told you when we were watching? It's not all pads. I yeah. mean, you get him out of pads and just see him in a regular suit or an outfit. He is a huge human being and a lot faster than what people know. When he gets rolling, he's a lot to bring down. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. And to give this time to the tailback. Bobby Wagner, the all-pro, in on the tackle. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second down, here's Henry. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Running left, it's Henry. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. And sometimes all of your best laid plans of play design, your X's and O's, they can't always account for individual effort defensively. And this was one of those times. Just a terrific play to hustle over there and get the running back to the ground. And the final number here in terms of top speed, I mean, that almost looks like a misprint. He was just absolutely flying. Unbelievable. From the 38, Tannehill. He's got Swain here, his tight end out right. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. 
On first down, it's Tannehill. Looking downfield for Jones. And that is incomplete. 158 left to play till we hit halftime. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Tannehill with a throw caught by Brown. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Tannehill to his top target, Brown, for a Tennessee first. A.J. Brown is starting to get a well-deserved reputation as one of the top flight receivers in the NFL. Went over 1,000 yards in his first two years. Makes another strong catch there. The first red zone opportunity for the Titans. They have a first and 10 at the 18. Throwing again is Tannehill. And that's off the mark, incomplete. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Tannehill. And he comes back with one complete. And the Titans are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Tannehill. The loop and into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Ryan Tannehill, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Titans are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. This is DJ Reed returning. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? I would have to think that would be the goal for sure. I don't think you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity. Push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. So minus a disaster on your part, you've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. And Gerald Everett makes a good catch there for a first down. And he was signed away from the Seattle Seahawks division rivals, the Rams, after four years in L.A. backing up Tyler Higby. He's excited about his opportunity in the Pacific Northwest. Last year, 41 catches, a career high. 
On first down, Wilson. He's got his man. That's Everett, the tight end. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now it's Wilson. This complete to Lockett. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. And that guy just keeps getting better. And I'm talking about Tyler Lockett, who just made that nice catch there for a first down. Now in his seventh season with Seattle, last year may have been his finest yet. And even 100 catches, many of them of the spectacular variety. Paired with DK Metcalf, a heck of a dynamic duo for the Seahawks. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. From the 25, here's second and six. Throwing again here, Wilson. He'll find Eskridge here complete. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Again, Wilson. He goes right back to Metcalf, this time complete. Nice throw. Big man catches the football for a first down, and that big man, that's DK Metcalf, the ninth receiver taken in the 2019 draft class. I think if we redid it, he might very well be the first one off the board. 83 catches for 1,300 yards last year. Myers' kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We saw a strong first half out of quarterback Russell Wilson. First, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Titans in that first half. And I can imagine the halftime discussions are about how can we improve the running game. They have not had success so far and it's reflected on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, for the Seahawks, they too didn't do a whole lot in terms of rushing efficiency in that first half, as you can tell by the numbers there. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half.
The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. Here's Reed. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at the 20. Throwing is Wilson. They'll find Everett there, complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Wilson. And that's incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake, third down. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. <laughs> Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, okay, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll start with a give to Henry. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 44 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. And Derrick Henry with the ball in his hands. What a sight to behold because power and speed involved in every touch for him coming off another spectacular season with the Titans. He became the first since LaDainian Tomlinson in 2006 and 2007 to win two straight rushing titles, and he did it with style, too. Just the eighth man to top 2,000 yards and the first since Adrian Peterson in 2012. He has his sights set on another 2,000-yard season. They keep it with Henry on first down, and he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? On second down, it's Henry. Stays on his feet and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 
The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. I remember watching Derrick Henry come out of Alabama and sitting with some scouts, and one of the debate points with him was, while at Bama, how often did he have to deal with contact near the line of scrimmage? They were so good up front that he often got to the second level pretty easily. I think he's starting to answer those questions with runs like that. He's a physical, physical guy. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now a handoff to Henry. Fights him off. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Henry running right. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. But well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. A first down carry for Henry. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. On second down now, it's Henry, and he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. Tannehill now to throw. This pass complete to Reynolds. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Now Tannehill. Flushed out right. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. So second and goal, and the big man Henry alone in the backfield. They'll give it to him up the middle, and he will score! Touchdown, Titans! Derrick Henry! Taking it in from two yards out. And the Titans are going to retake the lead. Well, hard to argue with that being their best drive of the game so far as they use the running game to get them into the end zone. Couldn't agree more, partner, prior to that drive. They sputtered a little bit, but it looks like they found the formula. I would expect them to go back to that more and more as this game develops. For the point after, Sam Ficken. And that makes it 14-10. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run.
Now Fick in to kick off following the touchdown. Here's Reed returning. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Now Wilson. That's to the tight end, Colby Parkinson. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second and two. Now a give right side. Carson trying to run inside, but nothing there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And Carson unable to make it to the yellow line as the defense bottles him up. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense. Linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And that'll skip out of bounds inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. Derek Henry and the rest of the Titans offense about ready to roll again. Since emerging from the locker room at intermission, he's looked pretty sharp, hasn't he? He's running in this third quarter like he got the orange slices at the half. Oh, yeah. Uh, you remember when he we got were kids? the orange slices, not the carrot stick. Oh, boy. There, there, there was always that mom, there was wasn't always, there? There was always that mom. Wasn't yours, wasn't mine. All right? <laughs> they brought the carrot sticks. But this guy, orange slices, and been reading the surface tablet, watching the defenses, and he's made some nice adjustments. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. A gain of three, second down. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down. Get to the fourth quarter. Try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Henry again on second down. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just you give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking.
The Titans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and three. Now it's Tannehill. He's got a man. It's Berkser, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard game. I think it's about time I took my eyes off of the secondary of the guys with the football. How about the offensive line on that snap? They took care of business. Absolutely, and when he can stay in the pocket like that, you're going to get big plays like we just saw. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Now it's second and nine. They'll run it again with Henry. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Seahawks 37. 94 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line bearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Tannehill going to throw on third and one. Throw left side here, hauled in by the tight end, Ferkser. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. It'll be a gain of six that time as it moves the chains as well. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Line of scrimmage at 31 now on first and 10. Again to Henry. And he winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Again, it's Henry. Yeah, he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. Here's Tannehill. Reynolds with a catch out on the right side. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tannehill hooking up with Reynolds for a Titan first. Big hook up there. Forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, Tannehill. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. That's a great job of tackling right there. If he could have made the first man miss, maybe he could have taken it into the end zone. Instead, they stopped him pretty well right in his tracks, and you often see that in the red zone. Offense has to be quick. In this case, the defense was quicker. 
Behind the chain, second and 12. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. He will push his way down to about the 14. They'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. A toss left. Henry. And he'll only get this to the 14 as he'll come up well short of the first down. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Pickens' kick is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. After knocking the field goal through, Ficken now kicking off. No run back here for Reed, so this will come out to the 25. So Wilson and the Seahawks trailing 17-10, 2.24 to go. Plenty of time here. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning as they've got it first and 10. on first down. That's into the hands of his tight end, Will Disley. And he'll be out right at the 35. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Wilson. He hits his target, lock it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That'll pick up the first down for Seattle on a gain of 18. Down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Now a throw here to his running back. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Now Wilson. They'll lock it with a grab over the middle. 
And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 29-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. First down now, but that clock rolling. Throwing now is Wilson. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Wilson trying to urge his guys to go faster and get set at the line. Wilson to throw. And this will go to Carson out wide. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Well, I guess at the very least, they got the tackle from keeping him out of the end zone. Yeah, you're looking for that silver lining, aren't you? But guess what? Everything changes now after that big play. They've got a chance to strike. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. Here's Wilson to the goal line, but it's incomplete. This secondary as a unit, they've worked really well together in this one, especially late. A lot of cohesiveness, a lot of communication, and some great athleticism. They're playing so well now, a nickname is sure to follow. They're going to have to name this whole unit soon. This Titan defense, they just will not give in easily. Looking for another stop third and goal. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. Well, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Now Myers for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And the touchdown at P18 mean we are tied here in the final minute of play. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as it kicks away. Taken at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Tennessee offense set to go again. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game. You don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he'll be taken down after a gain of eight, and defensively they'll say, you can have that. He'll get eight on the keeper there. It'll be second and a couple.
And we've got free football. Four quarters done, and we're dead even. We'll have overtime after this timeout. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. And we will not see a return to start overtime. It'll come out to the 25-yard line. The Titans set and ready to go on offense. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition, let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. And as we said, they control their own destiny now. They begin with Henry. Bulldozes past him. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. 102 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They'll keep it on the ground. Henry, and he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Third and one, trying to keep this drive and overtime going. A big one coming up. First throw in overtime for Tannehill. Gets this to Ferkser, the tight end. And he will have a Titans first down. At least it would appear that way. He didn't get it by much, but yes, they do get the conversion on third and one. They got a completion there. That's clearly an example. One side happy, the other side not very happy. Defense, very, <laughs> hey, take one or two yards. We're good with that. Offense, you've got to expect to get more on the passing play. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Out of the gun, Tannehill. That's complete to his tight end, Ferkser. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, He's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. On first down, it's Tannehill. Finding room inside the 40. And he'll get this down to the 39-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. So he hooked up with a veteran there and in overtime. That's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Not much there, only a yard. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Throwing again on second down. Tannehill, that's into the hands of Reynolds. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get over, that makes 
things tough for him. He's trying to get to the football. Third and two, Tannehill. This pass complete to Reynolds. And he will have a Titans first down. And he's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. Shaping up to be a very efficient opening drive here in overtime. And can you feel the tension building? Because I'm feeling it. All right, I've got the, I've got the sweaty palms here with each play because of the enormity of what's going on. Each play means so much in overtime, and they're handling it well as this drive continues. Again, Tannehill. And not able to get it that time. He hit on six straight passes. Not there. Second down. And I could see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Let's go. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. They'll try the right side with Henry. And able to work his way down to the 16. 110 yards on the ground for him so far. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Pickens' kick is good. And with that, they take the lead here, 20 to 17. So they do get the short field goal here to get them the all-important overtime lead. But, Charles, you wonder if they'll wind up ruining the fact that they were able to get down into the red zone, yet not able to find the touchdown that would have won them the game. Brandon, you're absolutely right. In overtime, when you get the ball first, the hope is your opponents never see the football. But now they're going to get a drive to try and win it, or at least keep the game alive with a field goal. And I'm getting a dictionary out to look up ruin. <laughs> After knocking the field goal through, Ficken now kicking off. Here's Reed. And he returns this to the 22. Let's go, baby. Now the ball now going back over to the Seattle Seahawks offense. The field goal would push it to sudden death. We just saw the field goal on the other end, but I don't think they are thinking field goal. At least not to start this drive, they're not thinking field goal. Not at all, because your point is well taken. Yeah, kick the field goal, you push it to sudden death, but you're also kicking off and giving the other team the ball with a chance to kick a field goal and beat you. Get the touchdown, finish the game off. That has to be the mindset. Wilson of the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 22. First throw in overtime now for Wilson. Flush to his right, and he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble, hit second down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Now, what can Wilson do here in the OT? That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. <laughs> Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. Oh, a leap, and he will make the catch. Every time, every time. And now 
this point in overtime. They know that they are in field goal range, and three points is a must in order to keep this game going. But after that big play, they've got to be thinking bigger. They've got to be thinking, get in the end zone, get six, and let's get out of here. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. On the delay, here's Carson. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. So a little chunk there on first as they try to chip away down three in overtime. I like your description. Chip away, down three. You don't have to get it all in one big play, although obviously that would be nice. But there's no need to have that type of risk associated with it. Run your offense, get first downs, get yourself in a position where you know you're going to at least get three and keep this game going. If you get six, so much the better. Carson will take the handoff out of the option play. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. timeout here called by the Titans. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. Can I be a little bit of Dennis Downer here, though? That drive, able to go that far, yet they had to kick the field goal to keep playing. You would have think, you would have thought maybe, could they punch it in and well, go ahead and end it? We get more free football. Oh, yeah, good point. Come on. I'm back upbeat again. Forget the Downer stuff. So each team's had it, each team's put up three. It's sudden death now, and here we go. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. The situation is simple. It is sudden death from here on out. We had two stops defensively. The next score, whatever it is, wins this game. And I can't wait to see how the defense decides to play this because knowing that the next point you give up, lose the game for you, I expect them to be more aggressive, not just play a normal situational defense, but go after them, attack them a little bit because otherwise the offense is just trying to find their way to get downfield and kick a field goal. Don't sit back and wait for them to make their plays. I think the defense needs to go after them. Charles Davis says maybe they go aggressive. And he's going to pick up a first down here as that clock Let's continues to run. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout. It'll be their second and final timeout, remember, here in overtime. We'll be back. Throwing Tannehill. He's got Ferkser, and they'll get him down after a gain of seven, but they'll happily give him that. Seven yards, the pick up there. One over 
overtime. How about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. Second down and three. Derrick Henry. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Keep playing hard. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. To throw is Tannehill. And now he lost the football. Tannehill loses it. Come on, fellas. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. Two first downs have him up to the 41 now for first and 10. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. Derek Henry all alone. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. Well, you never know what you're going to expect when you come to the stadium to call a game. Sometimes you get good ones, sometimes you get bad ones, sometimes you get great ones. And that's what we had here. What an exciting finish on that last big play. And I think that as we look at it, when you're talking about a great finish, which went along with a game that obviously was dramatic because we did get into overtime, what type of play calls do you have left? What have you not shown? Or what have you made an adjustment to what you've worked out all the way through that's going to give you the play we saw to win the game? Because I know everyone's thinking that that was something that they just drew up. It might have been something they've been working on, and now they got the right matchup. 